You may enjoy the money, but you know that money comes to you free. You didn't struggle for it. But the money you struggle for it, and you get it at the end of the, the day, you're going to enjoy it the most. Allah said, I want you to enjoy paradise. I don't want to tow you to paradise or push you to go to paradise. I want you to enjoy paradise. And you are not going to enjoy paradise unless you know that you did something positive in this life. You struggled in this life. You were steadfast. You were patient. You had so much fortitude in this life. And you achieved something. You deprived yourself from the lower whims and desires. You struggled. You resisted that. You're going to enjoy paradise in this case. Allah wants us to reach human perfection. Physically, Allah perfected us. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنَ تَقْوِيمٍ Spiritually, Allah wants me and you to do that. If your son comes home from school and he has homework, and if you want to write his homework for him or her, your son, your daughter are never going to be successful. They are never going to learn anything because the father is helping them. Because the father is doing the homework for them completely, entirely. They are not going to learn. So if you love your son, if you love your daughter, you might help them, encourage them, sit next to them, try to teach them, but you don't do it yourself for them in their absence. Because they are never going to be going to excel. They are, not, they are never going to learn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn and to benefit in this life. So he says, I created you in the first stage that I put invested so much potential and goodness in you that whatever goodness you want to achieve, you can achieve in this life. And through this, the process of struggling and learning, you are going to enjoy the ultimate success. And the last item in this hadith, and we're going to go to your questions since we have not seen you live for uh, almost four or five weeks because of the month of Ramadan. Uh, uh, today we're going to inshallah discuss some uh, questions with you uh, before the end of the program. And the fourth, the fourth item is أن تعرف ما يخرجك عن دينك The fourth question. The first one was أن تعرف ربك Second أن تعرف ماذا صنع بك Third أن تعرف ماذا يريد منك أو ماذا أراد منك And fourthly أن تعرف ما يخرجك عن دينك What sort of things that are derailing you Probably They pose as a danger to you they pose as a risk to your, to your driving. What are the hazardous things, the dangerous things that surrounds you? You have to realize that. Nowadays, sometimes we don't leave the house unless we know about the weather condition. If you are traveling, especially by car, you have to go to the weather website or weather channels and acquaint yourself with the weather conditions. You do not want to jeopardize your vacation or your trip or your family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want you to know the sort of things that they derail you from moving fast into your last destination. There are some dangerous things in this life. The halal and the haram, we have to realize them, we have to understand them. تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا These are the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the red lines. Do not transgress against them. Don't. Be careful. If you want to have a safe, healthy, enjoyable journey, then you have to know what is good and what is bad for you. أَن تَعْرِفَ مَا يُخْرِجُكَ عَنْ دِينَكَ And once you know what takes you away, what pulls you away, what derails you, from your final destination, 
you know them, you try to avoid them, then you're going to have a safe journey. Two things tonight before we conclude the program, brothers and sisters. One is the issue of Hajj. The season of Hajj is fast approaching, brothers and sisters. And Hajj is mandatory on every single Muslim, male or female, who have the physical and the financial and the mental ability to perform the Hajj. Istiba'ah. Istiba'ah means ability or capability. So if you are financially able, physically able, mentally ready for it, then you have to go to the house of Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, almost 4,000 years ago, stood on the Mount Abu Qubais in Mecca that overshadows the city of Mecca. And he screamed with his voice, that reverberated in the valleys of the city of Mecca. Ayyuha nas halummul hajj. O people, you have been invited to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus, when we go to hajj, the first utterance that the pilgrims do is to say, Labbayk Allahumma labbayk. Labbayk la sharika laka labbayk. O Allah, I am here. Oh Allah, I am ready to come to your house. You have invited me. I received the invitation. Now I am responding to you, Allah. Labbayk Allahumma labbayk. So the invitation has reached you many, many, many years ago. And if you are ready for it, do not delay it. Do not delay this important moral, religious, spiritual journey. This is a journey of self-discovery. This is a journey of self-awareness. This is a, a journey of self-consciousness. You're going to find yourself. As I said, the hadith says, and ta'rifa ma sana'a bik, to discover your own self. One of the ways, one of the ways of discovering our own selves is to go to Hajj. With this niyyah, with this intention that I am going only and only to seek God's pleasure to seek God's satisfaction. I am here just because God has invited me to come to His house. I am here to strengthen and deepen and consolidating my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am here to discover my Lord. I am here to discover myself. I am here urbatan in Allah ta'ala, seeking the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, try to go with this intention. And there are many groups nowadays. And by the way, I am telling you, the Hajj is getting more difficult year by year and month by month. It's getting more difficult. If you delay it and don't go this year, next year is going to be more expensive and more difficult. Because of the number, because of the huge number of people who desire to go to Hajj from all the four corners of the universe, of the world. So try not to delay it. Try to join any local group in your state, in your city. We in Southern California on the West Coast, we join a group of Assalam Hajj group. And you can inquire by calling here the station. They give you the number if you want to join the group from here. Those who are in Canada, you have your own groups in many cities in Canada. On the East Coast, there are many groups. Uh, there are many, uh, many, many Muslim groups who go to Hajj every year from North America. But let's jump, register your name, and do this pledge and this a promise. Make this a promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am going to join the group of Hajj this year to come to your house. This is the first. The second is all, most of you know, especially those who live in North America, that Southern California right now is going through a major natural disaster, the wildfires that started on Sunday or, or on Saturday. And it is raging through almost 12 or 14 counties. 
and there are huge fires and so far over 300,000 people in Los Angeles area.